Hey everyone, it's your boy Graphic back with another video and today we're going to be going over New World MMO's Great Axe combat updates and more. Uh, the Forge and Fury December update was released on December 15th, 2020 and we're going to learn a lot about the Great Axe, PvP duels, uh, shield updates, we got combat systems to learn about, we got ability, different kind of ability differentiation, uh, critical hit system, we got target healing, we got balance changes, we got UI changes, progression and reward changes. Pretty much all of the above is going to be great, great conversation here uh, as we're going to look at what each update has to do with New World. Now we're going to take a look at the Legendary Great Axe quest. You can actually get this Legendary Great Axe the Reformation. Level 60 adventurers can speak to Ranger Herb in Eating Grove to begin this quest. Recover the components needed to create this powerhouse and then deliver them to Ranger Medaki in Mountain Home. Now let's take a look at PvP duels. This is a great, great thing that uh, you know a lot of people wanted about. Every game has something like this to where people can practice their PvP combat and interact with each other. Duels can be initiated by any player over level 10, regardless of faction or PvP flag status. Duels cannot be initiated in settlements or during wars or invasions. Players can initiate a duel by hovering over another player's name in chat or a social menu and clicking invite to duel or by entering slash duel player name in chat. Outside interference will end a duel. You can duel solo or in groups of up to five players per side. That is a great, great thing that most games do not have. So you can actually duel multiple people at the same time. Um, I believe this will be, uh, like they said, solo or in groups. So you could have, you know, like a 2v2 duel, a 3v3 duel, or you could do like a, a 1v2 duel against somebody a higher level. Uh, it's a great way to have fun PvPing without a consequence. And I, I think this is a great, 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 great thing. I have not seen many PvP duels that have uh, the capability of more than two people in them. So great job to New World and Amazon Game Studio. Uh, let's head over to now the shield update. The shield update starts with the tower shield. The tower shield is a new shield and it is the biggest and most powerful shield in New World to date. The tower shield can take all but the greatest blows from your enemies. Uh, now we're going to look at the legendary tower shield quest. Just like the great axe quest, there is going to be legendary quests for most weapons and shields and Pretty much you're going to want to do those for that end game, uh, you know, legendary equipment. So players can gather components to craft the legendary tower shields, Rook Defense. Level 60 adventurers can speak to Ranger Wardell in Eating Grove to begin this quest. Now we're going to check out the updated shield mechanics. Amazon Game Studios has updated the way shields work for both armor and equipment calculations too. Shields now add to your armor in addition to block chance. Shield armor bonus is only applied when the shield is unsheathed and being wielded. Shields now also contribute to your total equipment weight. Now let's take a look at the combat systems. They made some large changes to address some of the combat feedback from the preview event. First, thank god they changed and removed the interrupts from light and heavy attacks for all weapons. Light attacks now have chains or strings of attacks that culminate in an ending attack, after which there will be a slight delay before the chain begins again. For all weapons except for the hatchet, light attacks chain together twice. Hatchets chain three light attacks together before resetting the chain. The recovery time after being hit with a light or heavy attack has also been reduced. Woo! This is going to reduce the absolute damage that a hatchet would do in 1v1 battles. You won't just get stunned and stun locked and just killed by a hatchet um, just by holding the left click now. And that's going to be a great change by New World. Thank God they changed that for the uh, when the beta comes out. We won't have as many people just hating on the PvP. We'll actually get a, a kind of a new look at what PvP uh, weapons really kind of dominate the 1v1 the 1v1 scene at least. It looks like they adjusted input buffers so delayed actions happen much less often. Input buffers were an invisible system that allows players to start inputting their next action before their current action has completed. As an example, if you press Q to use an ability right after using the right mouse button to do a light attack, your Q ability may execute a short while after you push the button for it. 
because your character was still completing their previous action. The input buffer allows small windows of time where a next move can be queued to keep combat moving feeling fluid. Now, today's update made the time window for each input buffer shorter so that you're less likely to wind up committing to a queued action that is no longer relevant due to changing battle conditions. And if you did not realize this in the alpha, if you guys played in the alpha or in the preview event or any of that, uh, this was a big deal as well. You queued actions and you know, you're done. The combat could be dead. You could already kill the guy or kill the wolf or whatever. And you're still auto attacking because you, you queued so many actions in a row. And that was a big problem. So this is a great that they took input buffers or adjusted them at least to make them better. Uh, so now let's look at the reduce the amount of stamina damage that light attacks do versus blocking and grit attacks. They reduce the recovery time after certain abilities. Players can now consistently cancel out of light and heavy attacks to begin abilities sooner, immediately after the attack's active frames. Players can now cancel out of light and heavy attacks to dodge sooner, a few frames after the attack's active frames have completed. Players can now cancel out of certain abilities sooner. Players can now cancel out of dodges sooner. They can also cancel out of attacks to begin blocking sooner. Removed the lock animation frames from blocking to allow for more free-flowing combat. And pretty much everything about what I just read lets me know that there actually will be a lot more fluid. I don't know if you guys realized it was a kind of clunky uh, PvP in duels. I don't know if you guys got to the PvP, but a lot of it was just clunky. Uh, there was a lot of extra... I don't know, you just felt you felt restricted, and this is really going to help with that. It seems like the movement is going to be great um, with what I read. It seems like there's going to be a lot of improvements just on the movement alone, and that's huge for games, um, and obviously the stun lock and all that. So the combat system is great, great updates by them. Uh, let's go down to the ability differentiation. So they have adjusted a number of abilities and attempt to give each a primary focus. The goal is for each ability to have a clearer purpose such as sheer damage, applying a status effect or crowd control, or damaging an enemy's grit, etc. So that is also a great thing. They have purposes for each, uh, you know, each ability. So they don't have an ability that kind of does it all. Um, and that's, that's great because you need different, you know, abilities and different skill sets to do different things, and that's awesome. Uh, so we're going to look at the critical hit system. Uh, they updated backstabs and critical hit indicators to match the visual look of headshot indicators for more visual consistency. They added sound effects as, sound effects as well to help signal when critical hits happen. Uh, now we have target healing updates. This is great for healers. I read a little bit of this. Um, they added a visual effect to highlight that players can self-cast using control plus the ability hotkey. They added new visual effects to highlight which player is currently being targeted. And they added options to the gameplay settings menu to allow players to customize their healing experience. Specifically, these settings allow players to refine their settings for how healing spells are targeted and how the camera behaves while targeting another player for healing. So that is great for healers. Um, I know it was kind of clunky before, and it looks like they're getting rid of a lot of the clunkiness. Obviously, that's going to happen when they're trying to release a game. They're going to try to get rid of everything and make it smooth, but not all games do it well. So it, it reads like they are doing it well. Um, I wish I could give you guys more details on if it's actually going well, but, you know, that is under NDA. So it does sound like, based on this article, that it is going well. So uh, we'll go to the balance changes now for the bow. We'll start out with the bow. Uh, spread shot damage reduced 15% and cooldown increased to 22 seconds. Rapid shot cooldown increased to 20 seconds. Evasion shot cooldown decreased to 15 seconds. Penetrating shot, cooldown decreased to 18 seconds. Uh, these are basically just abilities changed around. Uh, the spread shot, uh, spread shot damage reduction is kind of a big one. Um, but the, yeah, and you also have the increase in the cooldown um, as well. But all around, these, I'm sure these weapons and bows and all this, they're going to change a lot before the game actually releases. So these little balance changes are not going to be a big deal for us at the moment. But, uh, now let's take a look at what they did with the shield. They added two new shield specific perks. These are applicable to all types of shield. So that's cool for people that use the shield. You are going to have more perks available to you. Now let's take a look at the UI. Most of the UI's team's recent work has been on projects intended for future releases. But there are two areas seeing substantial updates in this release. 
So the tooltips, we overhauled the presentation of tooltips. Our goal was to make them more compact while making the categorization of information more clear and legible at a glance. We also show a few more combat stats and we have taken a tuning pass at making tooltips more responsive. And now they have the UI polish pass continues. So they are continuing to add updates to the UI in key places like the NPC dialogue screen and settings. But there are also small changes to various UI components across the game. They are striving to make interactive components more eye-catching and legible at a glance. And we've heard that legible at a glance a couple times, so that's great that they're going to make things a little bit easier to see and less cluttered and easier to just understand what's going on around you. So let's take a look at the progression and rewards because this is a great one. Um, progression and rewards, I think that's going to be a big one. To make sure people are still interested in the game after you know spending 40, 50 hours in the game. Make sure they're not completely, you know, progressed out and no rewards left that actually are you know needed to win wars or anything. Uh, you don't want people just logging in that hour a day to play the war and get off because there's nothing to progress in and there's no rewards to be had. Uh, so progression, we adjusted the leveling curve from levels 1 through 10 to be better and match the pace of quests. So that's good. They rested, uh, the rest experience, I don't know if you guys know what rest experience is, but if you are basically off of the game for a while, uh, you actually get a bonus experience when you come back and log in. So that's kind of nice for those people that can't play every day and all day, all, all day, every day, like some people. Um, and it really just allows you to kind of stay, you know, stay caught up with everyone else. Um, if that's your goal, you're still able to do that because of the extra increase when you log back in. So rest experience. So that is now starting to accumulate after 12 hours of being logged off. That is increased from eight hours. So they said, you know what? Eight hours is too short. We made it 12 hours. So you have to be logged off an extra four hours to get that increase of experience. Um, and it only increases at 2% per hour instead of its original 2.5%. Uh, they reduced XP from PvP missions by 10%, which is questionable to me because I think PvP should be pushed in almost every aspect. PvE is great, and you should definitely allow people to play just PvE. However, you should definitely be rewarded uh, for PvP missions, and I hope they do that in a different way, even if by chance that can't be through uh, just quests. So I'm okay with... Okay with them reducing the XP from PvP missions as long as they make PvP missions or PvP in general a uh, bonus to be doing and, com you know, completing or what do you call it? Uh, as long as they make sure you're participating in that and you get, you know, rewarded for that. Uh, so now we're taking a look at economy. So in this patch, we made a set of items change to pave the way for future crafting systems. Uh, we added new gathering milestones, resources, and crafting regions um in a future update we'll talk more about how these item changes fit into the overall crafting vision thank you guys for tuning in and i will see you guys in the next one i hope you guys liked all the changes that they're doing because i pretty much don't think i could be upset about any single change i just heard about uh all these updates seem great they seem like they're going in the right direction and i am very excited for new world i'm sorry it's been a little bit but i just wanted to wait until a good update was had to talk about i didn't want to just make some fluff videos uh so i will be making a lot more videos obviously when new world comes but for now i'll see you guys with the next update or the next big announcement um thanks for tuning in hit that subscribe button hit that like button thank you see you guys next time